to another edition of Mikey's Mail with my friends at allfreecrochet.com. For more information and free crochet patterns, please check out allfreecrochet.com. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to fillet crochet. Fillet crochet. F-I-L-E-T. And it's not just, this is not just a scarf, this is fillet crochet. And actually my name has been crocheted right into it. So if you're tired of the double stitch, double stitch, single stitch, you can actually put names and shapes into your crochet pattern by doing fillet crochet. With fillet crochet, it's all about graphing. So if you've ever seen the pattern books of the graphs and they're trying to make you to do shapes or letters, that's exactly what it's about. So don't just look at your crochet project and think, okay, it's just a series of unfortunate coincidences, but actually your uh, pattern is like a graph. And if I come up really close, you can actually see that the, it's kind of like graphed, isn't it? So you can do anything with these uh, fillet crochet concepts. I'm gonna teach you how to read the graphs, what to do when you get to the sections that need to be filled in, and where we with work. the permission of allfreecrochet.com, I'm allowed to provide you a link on how to get started with fillet crochet. It's gonna link over to my website, and from there, there'll be a few options to choose. It'll teach you how to do fillet crochet to begin with. But there will be two links that you'll want to pay attention to. If you want to create a name that is not specifically uh, well known or unusual, like maybe Zoe, and you can't find that name online, you can actually just take the graph paper, plot out the name on the graph, and then begin to fl uh, fillet crochet. Now also there's a secondary link, and it's a lady that has provided the entire alphabet in graphing format. And she has also provided just a few names and some shapes. So you can actually begin to work with her on that. Now just like your computer probably has 200, 300 different kinds of fonts and shapes, she only has one type of uh, font. So if you want to change it in any way, begin to look at it, grab some empty graph paper and begin to change your font accordingly. What you're looking at here is a fillet crochet graph and it's provided by Crochet Kim and she just happened to have my name as one of the lists so I didn't ask her to do this so it just happened to work out that way. In this uh, particular example she's providing a whole grid work for a blanket. She's provided two hearts up here which I didn't want, I just wanted my name. So she's also provided the entire alphabet if you're looking at for that as well. So when you're looking at a graph you don't want to look at it like you're reading a book and usually from a reading a book you're reading from left to right and then you come down again left to right because with uh, crochet you're always going back and forth back and forth so every other line you're actually going to be forming the letters backwards so basically you won't be able to pick, pick out the name or the words very easily because you'll be reading it backwards every other line the idea with fillet crochet is to start off at the bottom it doesn't really matter which side that you want to start on first um, but you need to start on the bottom and so when you go to read so let so I would have done blanks all the way across the graph and then I would have uh, come up and then come backward like so so you want to keep going back and forth back and forth and what you need to do is the very hardest line of all of them is the starting line because you need to establish and make sure all the spaces are actually right and then once you get to the second line up even though you're going in a backwards formation, you just can count over, okay, there's six spaces, so I'm gonna leave, sorry, there's seven spaces, so I'm gonna leave seven spaces, two solids, and then I'm gonna leave another seven, three solids, two. And so basically, you can start looking underneath of it to make sure that it's aligning properly. So how many stitches do you gotta do to go across the line? There happens to be 66 boxes here, and I'm gonna tell you how to do the math. So if you don't care about the math, the magic number is number four, but I'm gonna tell you why it's number four. And every box here is consisting of one double crochet for the crossing point, and then three chain, so one double crochet, chain, 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 and then another double crochet for the next crossing point. So you think, well, maybe the magic number is actually five because there was one, two, three, four, five. But the actual fact is, is that when you're going to repeat your pattern, you don't wanna count the crossing point twice. So in actual fact, you'll have double crochet, chain, 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 and then the double crochet then equals the next gridding spot. So that's why you end up with number four. But before you finalize your line, you have to add on one extra stitch because if you come over to here, you're gonna have double crochet, chain, 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 and then this is when you have to add on your extra one at the end to do your final. So I'm gonna start off showing you how to do uh, the fillet crochet, and I just put a shape together that we're gonna actually attempt. So we're just gonna start off with doing your slip knot, of course, 
and get that onto your hook. And I'm using a size G hook if you're inquiring with a four ply burnet. But if you want to do with lace material, obviously reduce your needle size and reduce your string. So we want to calculate the number of stitches that we're going to need. So remember what I said before, four, 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 and four plus one. So what, well that equals 16. So let's go, so we got one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's your first one. One, two, three, and four, that's your second. And one, two, three, and four, that was your third. One, two, three, and four. And we're at the end of our line already, and so we're just gonna add one because we need to have the actual boundary. So if you were doing a larger project, like my, my name, for example, I would have actually cal took a calculator, calculated the number of stitch, and then counted along. So now we're gonna move up to your next section. So I've basically used my mind and I've come across here and now we're gonna move up to the next part of the group. So in the other direction, what we actually need to do is establish these gaps. So what we've done is that we've come along the bottom piece and now we need to make sure that these gaps are in there. To get your very first gap on the edge, like we're always gonna do, this is how I easily remember it. Double crochet always consists of three chains when going up one line, and then we have our chaining of three going across that creates the gap. So what I do is hold my finger, and my index finger, and my thumb on this particular stitch right below there. So I go one, two, three. Okay, so there's the chaining that goes up, and then one, two, and three, and just visualize this bending over to forming a shape. And now what we need to do, where your finger and your thumb were, now count over and to the fourth one. So one, two, three, and four. So that's where we're gonna double crochet. So put your finger back into position and wrap your material and double crochet into that stitch. So your edges will always be the same. Uh, doing that 3-3 three, three configuration idea that I just showed you. So this is going to look like a circle, but in actual fact, it's more going to be a square once we get to the next steps. So we're going to go to our next uh, piece on the line. So we're going to chain, chain, chain. So chain, chain, chain. That's the three chains. And then count along to on the bottom chain. So one, two, three, and four, going into the fourth one over. So there's another one and then chain, chain, chain because we're calling for another gap. And then going into the fourth one onto the, to the bottom. Now it's very easy to miscount on this kind of idea. Um, so if you decide you got to the end and you've left too many stitches, you can always pull apart the end here in order to reduce the size. So let's chain, chain, chain again. So chain, chain, chain and then this will go into the very end. And that happens to be the fourth one anyway. So that's good, so I didn't miscount and that's all great. And so now you actually have a representation in crochet format to the very bottom of your thing. So let's so move along to your next line. So using your eyes, now let's come up and now we're gonna go backwards using this way even though we're crocheting that way.